I have here the new USB-C Apple Pencil. Now this is a new addition to the Apple Pencil lineup. This does not replace any previous Apple Pencil. The big dramatic difference with this Apple Pencil is the fact it has this cap. It lifts up just like that. It's very satisfying and it reveals a USB-C port. Now to pair this with an iPad, you need a USB-C cable. You plug one end into the Apple Pencil, you plug the other end into the iPad and boom, they're paired. You can use any USB-C cable, including the one that came with your iPad. You can even use the iPad to charge your Apple Pencil. Just plug a USB cable into the iPad and then the other end into the Apple Pencil. There's no need for any weird adapters or dongles or anything like that. You just take the same cable that you plug your, into your iPad Pro and you plug it right in to the Apple Pencil. But to note, this Apple Pencil does not come with a USB-C cable. Now, the cap itself, like I said, it's really nice. It's really satisfying to open and close. It's kind of basically a fidget toy. It, it makes this even satisfying clicking sound. I did have a question on Mastodon about how durable the cap is. The cap does not come off. It's completely on rails when I, you lift it up like this. In fact, here, I'll, I'll hold it by the cap. It doesn't, it doesn't come off at all. That being said, like if you were to be extremely rough with it, if you were to yank it really hard, if you were to run over it with a tractor, of course the cap's gonna come off. Like you can break it just like anything else, but you know, just using it normally, I've been doing this all day long and it's, it's not coming off. It's not breaking or anything like that. Now, obviously there is no wireless charging for this Apple Pencil, and that's because the 10th generation iPad doesn't have that wireless charging mechanic up at the top. That is where its front facing camera is. This is obviously to help cut down on costs. Now, there's a few things that this Apple Pencil doesn't have, and we'll go over all of them, but out of all of them, this is the thing I would miss the most. Now, I'll be the first to admit that wireless charging with the Apple Pencil is just convenient. It's just really nice. You plop it up there. That's how it pairs. That's how it charges. That's its storage spot. It's always there, always topped up, ready to go. This Apple Pencil though still uses those magnets from the iPads that have it, including the iPad Pro, iPad Air, iPad Mini, and even the 10th generation iPad, it has those magnets. It uses them for storage. So you can put the Apple Pencil right there. It'll stay right there, nice and neat. And when you put it in this storage mode, the Apple Pencil goes into a very low power mode. So it, you're not constantly draining battery. This was something the first generation Apple Pencil, uh, it was an issue with it. It didn't have a storage spot for it. So a lot of us got the pin loops and connected it to the back of the iPad. The issue with that was, is the Apple Pencil was always connected to the iPad. So it was just constantly being drained. Now, when it's connected like this, it's in this low power mode, the battery isn't being drained, really nice. Now I spent a bunch of time using this Apple Pencil for various different things. The first thing I did was just take notes with it because I'm me and I take a lot of notes. Uh, I used Scribble to handwrite out some notes and convert that into type text and work just fine. I also took some handwritten notes. It worked, but nobody's ever gonna be able to read them because my handwriting is atrocious. Now what's nice about this Apple Pencil and really all of the Apple Pencils, they all have that same low latency feature. Uh, it's really nice. Now, if you have an iPad Pro with the high refresh rate, you get the benefit of it being a higher refresh rate. So it looks like the latency is even lower, but it's really just the refresh rate of the screen being doubled. The other thing I use the Apple Pencil for a ton is marking up scripts. Now I'm actually getting ready to give my first big in-person conference talk. So I sat down with this Apple Pencil and I went through my notes and, and like kind of my outline for my talk and just marked it up and made some notes about it. And this worked really well. I love doing this with the Apple Pencils when, when it comes to scripts, but in this case it was a conference talk and it worked really nice. I also mark up a ton of PDF documents, whether it's like tax documents or uh, contracts or all sorts of different things. You know, I have to sign documents, date stuff, fill out all the forms, and I use the Apple Pencil for that quite a bit. Now, when it comes to marking up documents and stuff like that, I make a lot of mistakes. I'm not perfect, I know, it's a shock. World shattering, but we'll move past it, I promise. So I get to the eraser a lot. And on the second generation Apple Pencil, you have the feature called double tap, where you can double tap it and it'll jump between your current tool and a previous tool or an eraser or the color picker, however you set it up. I typically have mine set up to go to the eraser because I make mistakes. 
This Apple Pencil doesn't have double tap, so that feature isn't available for me with this pencil. Now I've heard from quite a few people that don't like double tap because they accidentally trigger it and it just causes issues for them. Some people have even told me they turn it off. So it could be a good thing for some people that this Apple Pencil doesn't have double tap, though you could always just go and turn it off in the software, uh, but you can save yourself a little bit of money along the way. Now this new USB-C Apple Pencil does support hover when it comes to the M2 iPad Pros. Right now at the time of recording, the M2 iPad Pros are the only iPads that have this feature. What this is, is you you can take the Apple Pencil and hover over the screen and you'll see a preview of the brush that you're gonna draw with. But in my case, what I use this for is when I'm editing in Final Cut in tablet mode. I use this a ton as kind of my cursor, my pointer to kind of move throughout the timeline, to move things around. It's really nice. I also obviously use the Apple Pencil with the Apple Pencil Animate feature in Final Cut. Um, but yeah, the, I really like Hover and I'm glad to see it's there. I think the Hover actually has more to do with the iPad hardware than it does uh, uh, the Apple Pencil hardware. Now on this new USB-C Apple Pencil, when the cap is closed, it's actually shorter than the second generation Apple Pencil. This is kind of nice. I always thought the second generation Apple Pencil was a bit long. I mean, it, it was fine. It's not the end of the world, but this one feels a little bit nicer to hold. Now, if you do open the cap, it does equal about the same length as the second generation Apple Pencil. Now I did sit down and well, try and draw with this Apple Pencil and try is the keyword because I cannot draw to save my life. I am so bad at it, but I did do it because one of the big things that this Apple Pencil doesn't have is it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. Pressure sensitivity is when you're using the Apple Pencil, you can push down even harder and you can make the, the brush stroke thicker uh, because it, it would act like if you had a paintbrush and you applied more pressure with the paintbrush or a marker or something like that. That's what it's trying to mimic. This Apple Pencil does not have that. Now you can get around that by making the brush stroke thicker, turning up the opacity, making it darker, or making the, the, the color darker. There's all sorts of different ways to get around it. I, I, I honestly don't think not having this is the end of the world, especially if you're the kind of person that doesn't draw with the Apple Pencil. If you use the Apple Pencil to take handwritten notes or you use it like I was talking about with Final Cut as kind of a cursor, there's a lot of great apps out there that the Apple Pencil works really well with as a cursor. Not having pressure sensitivity, it's not the end of the world. I think it's totally okay, but I could see this being the thing for a lot of people that this Apple Pencil missing is, is the big deal. But that being said, this Apple Pencil is not replacing the second generation Apple Pencil. Uh, so it's not the end of the world. It's not like pressure sensitivity is completely going away. Now, when it comes to battery life, I think battery life on this Apple Pencil is more important than the second generation one because you do have to manually plug it in and charge it. It doesn't have that wireless charging option where you just set it down there where it's its normal resting place and it charges it. I was told it would get about a week's worth of battery on normal use. Now, I'm not entirely sure what normal use is. I haven't had it for a full week, so I don't know, but I charged it up, I've been using it, and I haven't really seen a major dent in the battery life. So I'm inclined to believe that, but that's something I'm gonna be playing around with a lot more, and I will report back once I have more information. Now, there is a ton of confusion about the Apple Pencil lineup. I've talked already about a bunch of that, and I just wanna take a little bit of time and kind of clear that up. Since the introduction of the Apple Pencil, there has been three different models. All three of those models are still on sale, but no iPad supports more than two Apple Pencils. So let's kind of break down which Apple Pencil is right for you. So. First off, if you have a lightning iPad, so an iPad that plugs in via a lightning cable, the first generation Apple Pencil is the one for you, given if your iPad supports that. Uh, look up to make sure your iPad supports that. Not all lightning iPads had Apple Pencil support. Now, I know it looks weird, but it's convenient that you can just plug it into the side and charge it. It works, it gets the job done. When the iPad Pro was on that Apple Pencil, that's how I charged it. I never used the weird adapter thing. I always just plugged it into the side. I know it looks weird, but it works. Now, if you have the 10th generation iPad, this is the new base iPad. The first generation Apple Pencil does work for that but just don't get it. Because it, it has a lightning port, you have to use the weird USB-C, the lightning adapter. It's just, just, it's not great. 
get this Apple Pencil, get the new USB-C Apple Pencil. You can charge it with the same cable you use to charge your iPad. It has the magnetic storage option. It's just so much better than the first generation a Apple Pencil when it comes to the 10th generation iPad. And if you're a professional artist, you're probably not going with that iPad anyways. You're probably going with an iPad Pro. The lack of the second generation Apple Pencil support on the 10th generation iPad is probably not that big of a deal. I really see that Apple Pencil as for artists. And if you're an artist, you're probably going with the iPad Pro so you can get the high refresh rate and bigger canvas in the case of the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. You also want pressure sensitivity if you are a professional artist, so you're gonna go with the second generation Apple Pencil anyways. If you have a USB-C iPad Pro, iPad Air, or iPad Mini, you can use either this new USB-C Apple Pencil or the second generation Apple Pencil, the one with wireless charging and pressure sensitivity and double tap. It's really up to you which one you think would work for you. Would wireless charging, pressure sensitivity, or double tap be actually useful to you? Then you can get the second generation one. That's $120. If those features don't really appeal to you, you can get this USB-C one for $79. If I didn't already own two of the second generation Apple Pencils, one for my iPad Pro and one for my iPad Mini, I would probably just use the USB-C Apple Pencil. I'd save myself some money. The Apple Pencil isn't like the key tool in my workflow. I definitely use it in my work, but it's not like, it's not as important to me as like a keyboard and trackpad because I type most of my stuff. I do do some handwriting stuff, but I definitely type a lot more than handwrite. So just a reminder, all of the Apple Pencils have the same low latency feature. So that's one of the really big benefits you get with going with an Apple Pencil as opposed to a third party option. Now, in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be putting out a video called The State of the iPad. Uh, I, I kind of do this every year or so where I just look at like, the iPad hardware and software lineup, you know, kind of talk about where it's at and, and what I would like for the future. One thing I'm gonna mention in that video is I would like to see the iPad lineup and now the Apple Pencil lineup kind of get cleaned up. What ultimately I think needs to happen is the ninth generation and all lightning iPads and the first generation Apple Pencil needs to go away. This USB-C Apple Pencil should really just be called Apple Pencil. And the second generation one, the one with wireless charging and all that other stuff, should be Apple Pencil Pro. I really think that would help clean up the lineup and solve a lot of the confusion. At the end of the day, I really like this Apple Pencil. It makes sense, especially now that we're moving away from Lightning. There's only one iPad that Apple sells that you can go to Apple's website and buy that has a Lightning connector still. So it makes sense to have this USB-C Apple Pencil. This definitely fills a need for certain people, people that aren't artists, that aren't looking for an Apple Pencil to do a bunch of drawing with. They just wanna take notes or maybe mark up some stuff. They just want to use it as a pointer or things like that. The other way to look at this Apple Pencil is it's the education Apple Pencil. This is $79 regularly, but with the education pricing, it's 69. And that is significantly cheaper than the 120, especially when you're buying a bunch of these if you're an education person, school thing. Let me know what you guys think about this Apple Pencil in the description below and if you're going to be picking one up. Thank you all for watching this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.